Have you ever prayed, God, what's your will? What's your will for me? What's your will in this situation I'm going through? Maybe you were trying to decide whether to go to college or to take the job opportunity that's right in front of you. Maybe you're trying to decide if the one you're, you're dating is the one. Maybe you're trying to decide whether to sell that house or buy that car or take this trip or apply for a job somewhere else. There's so many decisions in life. Would you turn with me to, in the Bible, to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8? And we're in a series called Courageous Faith. So every Sunday morning, we're talking about great examples of the faith, great heroes. In, in my Bible, the, the, the editor added a little heading, great examples of the faith. And it's not all of the heroes of the Bible, but just some selected ones. And we're, we're looking at their lives to try to find inspiration, instruction, uh, try to see how we could have courageous faith also, because we want that in our lives. We, we want courageous faith, faith that prompts us to step out for God. So today, we're going to learn from Abraham's example, and we're going to find some practical principles and help from his life for those times when you are in the valley of decision. So we can take a look at what Abraham did and what he is applauded for, and we can use some of those things in our life. I, I love Daniel Lockwood's book, Unlikely Heroes, and I, I'm, I'm grateful to him for some of the things I'm going to share with you today. So Hebrews 11, verse 8. It was by faith. Somebody say, by faith. By faith. Somebody say, by faith. by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed. And that's part of faith. Obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance, as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. Wow. Now, if you had been his father, what would you have said? You're crazy. I don't know why that sounded like Donald Trump just for a second there. <laughs> this is going to be huge. Don't go. No, but God told him, go. Go. And God said, his first call to him that we have in the Bible was, go to a land I will show you. He didn't even tell him where the land was. He just packed up and started going. Now, I think that is pretty courageous faith. Yeah. Wow. He was 75 years old, living in the part of the world that today we call Iraq. It wasn't called that then. And God said, leave everything that's familiar to you. Leave your uh, extended family behind and head to the land. I'll show you as you go. And God said, if you will do that, I will make a great nation of you and I will bless you. In fact, God said, I will bless the whole world through you. That is an amazing promise. Now, keep in mind, Abraham's context is very different than our context today. Abraham didn't have the Bible. Can you imagine a great hero of the faith who had no written down Bible yet? Wow. Okay. So uh, we know that Abraham heard from God so clearly that he packed up everything and left. How did he hear? Was it a vision? Was it a dream? Was it just an audible voice? Was it that an angel came to him or even the angel of the Lord? We believe that Jesus sometimes came before he was born in Bethlehem and just took on human form and showed up. Is that what happened? We don't know. We don't know how this first one happened. But we know that Abraham heard God's word and he obeyed it by faith. And so I've got just some principles for you today. The first one is this. Faith begins with God's word. Faith begins with God's word. Something powerful happens when you get God's word in your spirit. 
It's, it's, there's just nothing else like it. There's no other book, there's no other word like God's word getting in your spirit. Through God's word, you learn his character. You learn what he's like, his habits, his patterns, how he speaks. And we are so blessed to have the written word. And faith begins in God's word. When we talk about becoming Jesus' apprentice and following him and studying him, it begins with his word. And it's really through his written word that we recognize his audible voice when he speaks to us. Sometimes the Holy Spirit, as you're, as you're reading along, the Holy Spirit just makes one verse jump off the page to you, and you suddenly know, wow, i got to pay attention to this. God is speaking to me through like this particular verse. And there's, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about that. It's Romans 10, 17. And this is what it says. So faith comes from hearing. That is, hearing the good news about Christ. Other translations say hearing the word of Christ. And that the the root word of the word word in this verse is a word that that means it, it's uh, it's rhema word. It is a specific word that the Holy Spirit makes alive to you from God's word. And God may speak to you through prayer, through a prophetic word, through a vision, through a dream, through a song, through circumstances lining up a certain way in your life, lots of different ways. But we know that however God speaks to you, it must line up with the written word of God. It is not going to contradict the revelation that God has already given us. It's not going to tell you to, uh, a a word that you're thinking, I wonder if this is God speaking to me. It's not going to tell you to disobey a command in the word of God. And that's, that's really one test. That is, that is the first test that we do. And if someone brings a word to you and someone says, man, I've got a word for you. I believe this is a prophetic word. Then the first thing we do is we line up with God's word. And the second thing we do is we ask, has God already been saying this to you? And really, if God has not been speaking to you about something and someone comes up and tells you, go make a radical change in your life and it's just out of the blue, then this is what I would say about that. Let's put a pin in it. Let's come back to that later. Let's store it away in our, in our mind and begin to pray, Lord, is this you? And God will bring confirmation. He, he is not going to come and tell you to do something radical that is out of the blue for you. Uh, it, unless he's already been, been stirring you. Maybe he's been stirring in you and you, you've just had this sense, I just feel like something new's coming. A new chapter's coming. And then someone comes with a word like that, now then we pay attention in a different way because God's already been speaking to you about it. Do you ever wish that you could have a clear, tangible, direct call like Abraham got? I do. That would be so awesome just like to see God for yourself, to hear his voice audibly in such a way that there's just no doubt. I know that's God. But listen, remember that you and I, we have a lot of stuff Abraham did not have. We have the Bible. We have Jesus God himself who came, took on the form of man, and came to earth and showed us what it was like to walk with God. We, we have the, the sacrifice has been paid for your sin and my sin. Jesus gave his life up on the cross. He laid it down for you and for me. Abraham did not have that yet. Jesus said, Abraham saw me coming. And I don't know how all that works, but we can look back and see that Jesus came. We have the Holy Spirit The Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost to the whole church. And now we come as the church and we say, baptize us afresh with the Holy Spirit. And he does. The Holy Spirit lives in you and me. If you put your faith in Jesus, wow, we have all that that Abraham never had. He had to depend on just special, unique times when God would show up in his life. But God is in your life. God is in my life all the time. And faith begins with God's word. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 11, 9. So going on, the next verse. And even when he reached the land, God promised him, 
Abraham lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, that's his son and grandson, who inherited the same promise. God gave the same promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when Abraham left his home, God said, just go. I'll, I will tell you once you get started, I'll tell you where I'm going. Just go. He, he goes. God leads him to, the, uh, to what was then called Canaan. Today, it's, we know it as Israel. When Abraham got to Canaan, first thing he did was set up his tents and build an altar of worship to God. It's very significant that the first things he did, he just got his family settled and said, I got to build an altar to God. And he would sacrifice an animal. That's the way that they worshiped in his day. And he would sacrifice an animal to God. And when he did, God visited him again. And he gave him and his descendants the land that he was standing on. So all Abraham knew is, I'm heading somewhere. When he, got, he gets to this place in Canaan, he sets up his tent, he builds an altar, he worships the Lord, and God says, you're here. See this land that you're in? All of it, I'm giving to you, Abraham, and I'm giving to all of your descendants. Pretty amazing thing to happen to a person. And especially when you realize that at this time, Abraham didn't even have one child yet. So God's saying, I'm going to make you a great nation. You can't, it's going to be too many to even count. Uh, more, more descendants than the sands on the seashore. I'm giving it all to you, Abraham, and I'm giving you this land. I'm making a great nation out of you. I'm going to bless the whole world to you. And he doesn't even have his first child yet. Wow. It's pretty amazing. So it's interesting that in the book of Acts, chapter 7, Stephen, the one for whom my son was named, Stephen, one of the early believers, was, he, was, he was giving a defense of, of, uh, of Jesus and of Christianity. And he started kind of going through the whole history of Israel. And when he talked about Abraham, Stephen tells us Abraham never built a house. It's in Acts chapter 7. He never built a city. He'd stay a while, Abraham would stay a while, and then he'd pick up those stakes. That's, that's where that expression comes from. He'd pick up the tent stakes, fold up the tents, and move on to the next place. And he, kept, he just kept moving south. And every time, he'd set up his tents and build an altar, and he would worship God. That was his practice every time. He'd worship God, worship God, worship God. And just by uh, uh, step after step, just phase after phase, he's moving through the land of Israel and seeing it all. And that's the second principle. Faith is progressive, one step at a time. Faith is progressive, one step at a time. Abraham just kept following God. God did not give him the whole plan at all. I mean, he starts by just saying, just go, that's it, and Abraham went. And as he would go along, God would just reveal a little bit more. And many times, Abraham waited for years Years, like 25, 26 years at times for God's promise to come to pass. And I just cannot even imagine knowing something's coming and then waiting that long. Don't you sometimes wish that you knew all the next steps of a plan? Wouldn't that just, it seems like it would just help so much. Like just to know everything that's going to happen for the rest of your life right now in one just sort of like video download into your mind. I know everything that's coming. Wouldn't it be just so much easier? But just think, if God told you everything that's coming in your life, we know we live in a broken world, and so some bad things are coming. It, it happens. Recessions come, jobs get lost, people move. It, it, things happen. Bad things happen. Diseases come in our life. Can you imagine if you knew everything bad thing that was also going to happen for the rest of your life? The dread and the fear and the striving and the anxiety that that would bring. So I believe God in his mercy does not tell us everything that's coming. Even some of the good things that are coming would overwhelm us. Yeah. And we might be tempted, like Abraham was, to make them happen on our own. So God in his mercy does not give you the whole entire plan to the end. And I, I think that's good. He just reveals one step at a time. In, in the Bible, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord 
with a, a little corner of your heart. Is that what it says? Trust in the Lord with, say it with me, with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take immediately the second you pray. Oh, oh, wait. Is that what it says? No. It just says keep seeking, and when you need to know, he'll show you what's next. So your posture, my posture, is to lean on the Lord, trust in the Lord, seek the Lord. And that's just our daily practice forever as believers in Jesus. And God will show you what's next when it's time, when it's time to take that step. Just go with the last instruction you got. Just obey the biblical principles that you know. And thank God that he's got you. Could you just say up to God, maybe even just... Head up there. Just say, God, thank you. You got me. Go for it. God, thank you. You've got me. Oh, yes. And so we just keep trusting, keep following God. Have your tent ready and regularly worship. Have your tent ready. Wherever God tells you to go, wherever he leads you, whatever he's job. Like not not necessarily that he's going to move you out of the city or something, but just be, be in a state of readiness. Lord, I'm ready. In prayer gathering this morning, which I love our Sunday morning prayer gathering, one of the things we prayed for is for the people around us in the community. And I don't know if you've noticed, we have new invite cards uh, that are very encouraging out in the lobby. You can take some and invite some people. But when we were instructed and led this morning to pray that the people around us in the community would experience hope, I took out my, my wallet where I have some, some invite cards. I took them out and I just held them up and I just prayed. And I said, God, you see these invite cards I've got in my wallet right now. I am ready. Open a door, and I will go invite some people. And I I, I just have a couple left. I've already given some out. i got to get some more. i got to refill, replenish, because I believe that God is, uh, my tent is ready. That's my point. My tent is ready. Whatever you got for me, God, I'm ready. I want to do it. I'm saying yes. Faith is progressive, one step at a time. Sometimes God is waiting to give you the next step until you obey the current one. Mm-hmm. You're like, what, God, you got to tell me about this other thing. God's saying, no, I already told you about this thing. It's a very little thing. Just go to the river and dip. That's what, that's what one guy was told in the Bible. Do that first, and then we'll talk about what's next. Wow. So maybe, I, that was not in my notes, Maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now, and he's reminding you of just a little thing that he's instructed you to do. Do it. And when you need to know, God will give you that next step. Here's another principle. Faith may involve failure, but faith does not give up. Faith may involve failure, but it does not give up. Everybody fails, and if you're not failing, you're probably not trying enough stuff. Everybody fails. But that doesn't mean you're a failure. Faith may involve some failures, some failed attempts, but it does not give up. I'm thinking about Abraham. Oh, my goodness. He had some of the most amazing experiences of anyone. In fact, in the Bible, in the New Testament, I believe that he, he is applauded for his faith more than any other Old Testament character. Constantly, the Bible is talking about Abraham's faith. He had some mountaintop experiences where he met God, and he said, "Uh, wow, you're here. Okay, I'm going to make you a dinner. They sit down, they have dinner together. Like, wow, that's amazing. God did so many things. Um, God uh, revealed himself in powerful ways and in intimate ways to Abraham, and God proved in some very powerful ways that he was going to, he intended to keep his covenant promises But then God made him wait for their their fulfillment. Sadly, Abraham messed up royally. Like, wow, really big. Two times when he and his family traveled to other places, he was afraid that God would not take care of him, that someone was going to kill him and take his wife, who was just, she was beauty queen, drop dead beautiful, even at 65 God had just blessed her with that gift. 
And Abraham was, was afraid that they would take, uh, kill him and take his wife. And so he lied. He, he told a little bit of a half-truth. He deceived and said that Sarah, his wife, was his sister, kind of covering up the part about that she was his wife, rather than trusting God to protect them. He put his wife in danger twice. And we're going to see the next generation does the same thing. Abraham messed up so badly. And then, because God made him wait a long time for his promised son, he takes his wife's suggestion and sleeps with her Egyptian maid named Hagar. He was rushing in to make things happen on his own while God was delaying things on purpose in order to create a bigger miracle. God had not left him. God actually was working on something better for him. The, the a son that was born to him in Hagar, Ishmael, and then later his son of promise, Isaac, uh, have, they and their descendants have been in conflict since day one, like for the last 3,000 years. It was, it was really a very big mess up on Abraham's part. So here's Abraham, the guy that's talked about more than anyone else as being a great man of faith, the father of our faith, the hero of our faith, the patriarch of our faith, who messed up so badly. But the good news about failure is found in the Bible, Proverbs 24, 16, the godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. Isn't that good news? If you're trying to follow God, you might, you might mess up, you might sin, you might stumble, you might fall royally, but you're going to get back up again. You're not going to stay there. You're not going to stay down. The godly get back up. So they, he just uses the words uh, seven times, but the idea is just they're just going to keep getting up. They're just going to keep getting up. They're not going to be knocked down. 1 John 1, 1.9 says, but if we confess our sins to him... He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. This verse was written to the church, written to believers. Does it have a limit on there? No. So if you are following Jesus and you mess up or you sin, you come to God, you confess your sins, and he is faithful and just. His promise is to forgive you and to cleanse you. So that's good news for you today. God gives second chances. God is the God of second chances. That is so good. Praise God. And then Jesus said, okay, now take those second chances you're getting from God and go pass them on. Peter was like, how many, God? Uh, how, how many times do I have to forgive when someone hurts me? Like, I just want to know the limit. So after that, I can clobber them. And Jesus is like, no, no, buddy, you don't understand. It's an unending forgiveness. You just keep forgiving until you die. You forgive, forgive. You take the second chance God given, has given you, and you go give those to other people. Forgiven people are forgiving people. Forgiven people are forgiving people. It's how we are. Faith may involve failure, but it doesn't give up. In Hebrews 11, uh, kind of winding down here, verse 10. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. Let's skip it down to verse 13. All these people, so Abraham and Sarah, their son Isaac and Jacob, he's been telling their story, all the patriarchs died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. And then verse 16, but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland, and that is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he is prepared a city for them. Wow. So my last principle, faith knows that this world is not the end. Faith knows that this world is not the end. Faith knows this world is not the end. 
Shortly before Jesus was crucified, he said to his disciples, it's written down in John 14, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to go and prepare a place for you? Because he had been telling them that. When everything is ready, I'll come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And in the next few chapters in the book of John, as it tells, uh, uh, gives us a glimpse of those things that Jesus said in his last days on earth, he said, in effect, I am so excited. I want to have you with me. I want you to see the glory that I had with the Father before the world began. I want you to be with me. I want you to live with me. I want to live with you. This is Jesus' excitement. And right now, he is preparing a place for you. And he is excited to have you come. He wants you there. He's like, man, I can't wait. Tell you, sir. It's going to be so awesome. We're going to order pizza. It's going to be great. There will be no pepperoni in heaven. What? In my heaven. No, I don't know. I don't know. Your heaven. Maybe your, maybe your slice of heaven has some pepperoni on it. Oh. There is a home. Okay, you can have pepperoni. I, I don't want to speak that. You can have pepperoni. There is a home in heaven prepared for you. If you put your faith in Jesus here on earth. In heaven, listen, there will be no sickness. There will be no physical issues. There will be no sorrow, no pain, no crying, no conflict. We'll be face to face with Jesus and God will be your shelter. He will actually be your fortress, your protection. Nothing can get at you because God is surrounding you. This city that God is preparing for you is pure gold. It is an amazing place. It, the gold is as clear as glass. I don't even know what clear glass gold looks like, but I just cannot wait to see it. The foundations of the city are made of precious gems, so like things like diamonds and rubies and sapphires are all along this, uh, the, the foundations of this city that God's preparing for his people, for you and me. There are, there are 12 gates to this city, I, I believe symbolic, and the, each gate is made of a single pearl. So a gate uh, that is a pearl, eight foot in diameter. That is amazing. I cannot wait to see that city. And there's no night there because Jesus is the light and he is always light. And there's no scary darkness where Jesus is. That's so awesome. The river of life flows out from God's throne and trees of life grow on either side. And I believe we're just going to keep eating and enjoying eternal life with Jesus forever. And I believe also we're going to be busy, that we're going to have some work to do, that God's going to have some missions for us. And I can't wait to see what that's like. It's going to be awesome. Most of all, that you're going to see Jesus face to face. It's by faith now. It'll be by sight then. Wow. So when you're not sure what to do, when your miracle is delayed, especially when you fall, know by faith that this world is not the end. This world is not the end. It doesn't all end here. There's more to come. Heaven lies ahead for you. So live your life today with heaven in view. Amen? Amen. Would you stand to your feet? I want to just lead us in prayer. Would you bow your heads with me? And let's pray. Let's pray about faith, and let's pray about what God has for us. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would help me and us to have courageous faith. Lord, I know that that might mean that you say, just go without telling us where. Lord, help us to have the kind of courageous faith that they could write about me one day, Garen went. God said go, and Garen went. And may that be true of every one of us here today. Lord, I pray for courageous faith in us, Lord. Faith that stays steady, keeps following you even if there's a delay. Faith that, that trusts you, that obeys you, that believes in you. And I'm wondering with your heads bowed, what you're experiencing. Do you need courageous faith? Let me see your hand. 
in the room and online. You can raise your hand to God. You can put your hands down. Are you in a, in a situation right now where you're not sure which decision to make? If that's you, let me see your hand. Maybe it's a little one or a big decision. Maybe it's a bunch of decisions. Just, but you're, it's decision time. Ah, Okay, you can put your hands down. Um, how about are you patiently or impatiently waiting for the answer to your prayer? Maybe you've been praying for something for a long time. You believe it's coming, but it's, it's not there, and you're, you're getting impatient. Can I see your hand? <laughs> Many hands up on that one, too. You can put your hands down. Have you failed in some way? Maybe you've sinned. Maybe you've missed the mark. Maybe God told you to do something. You didn't do it. But have you failed in some way? Can I see your hands? Just raise it to God. Yeah. And God loves that kind of honesty. So do I. I really appreciate it. I admire it. I have failed in about a bazillion ways. And so I just want to pray for you. Lord, you see our need. You see all these things, Lord God. Lord, I pray for everyone who's in a time of decision, everyone that is in the room, everyone watching online, even those watching at a later time, I'm praying for them too. I pray for people who are in the valley of decision right now, small decisions or big ones. And Lord, I pray that you would make it clear what is the next step if you say go, we go. If you say stay, we stay. Lord God, I pray that you would make it clear. And I know you don't necessarily give us the whole plan, but I do pray for the next step so that we can obey you. And because we're ready to obey you, I have faith you're going to answer this prayer right now. Show us the next step. Confirm it. Confirm it in multiple ways if you have to, Lord. Get our attention. We're open. Our minds are alert and ready and watching you, Lord God. Lord, for the person who is patiently or impatiently waiting for an answer, we feel like you gave us a word from the Bible or, or through other ways, songs or circumstances or however you brought it, a prophetic word. You, we feel like you've given us this word that the answer's on the way. Our loved ones are going to be saved. Our, our need is going to be met. And yet we haven't seen it yet, Lord. And I pray for that person who is in the waiting period. Lord, please help us to not go all Abraham and Sarah over this and try to get, try to rush you or make something happen that's actually sinful. Lord God, in Jesus' name, protect us and show us how to wait. Lord, I pray that every day we would pray. I pray that every day we would worship you, that every day we would trust you, every day we would follow you, every day we would obey your word that you have given us. So we're ready to receive the next step when it's right on time. And Lord, I pray for all of my friends, myself included, who have failed in some way. Maybe we had a calling from you and we didn't, we didn't take it. We didn't, we didn't take those steps. We shrunk back. Maybe you told us don't do a certain thing and we did it. Maybe we just outright sinned and disobeyed and, and done what felt good in the moment. Lord, I pray that you would forgive us. Lord, your word said that if we confess our sin to you and if, if it's sin, if that's the failure, would you just silently in your mind just say it to God, confess it to God? It's this, God. I own it. I did this or I didn't do this. And Jesus, your word says that if we confess our sins to you, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So Jesus, as we have, as we have confessed, we ask for your forgiveness. I just agree with your word and I declare we are forgiven. We are cleansed. Would you say out loud, we are forgiven? Oh, I, I think we need to make it personal. Let's say out loud, I am forgiven. I am cleansed. Amen. Amen. With your head still bowed, I want to just give you one more opportunity to pray. And I don't know if you have ever put your faith in Jesus, or if you did when you were a kid and you went to VBS or church or something with a neighbor, and you, but today when you evaluate, you know you're not really following Jesus today. I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus to save you, to save you from your sin. We are all born into sin. We all need a Savior. And so I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. How do you do that? Turn away from your sin, all those things that separate you from God. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead. That is the biblical pattern for becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. If you are ready to do that today, 
Christians are praying for you right now that you would make this step of faith, faith in Jesus for salvation. And if this is your day, would you just raise your hand as a signal to me that just says to me, Pastor, I, I'm making the decision today. I want, I'm putting my faith in Jesus today. And if you're online, would you raise your hand to God? I can't see you back to the camera, but God can see you. I'm going to pray for you too. I'd love to just pray for you if today is the day you're putting your faith in Jesus. Church, would you help me out? Let's just all repeat after me. But if you are putting your faith in Jesus today, you say this right to God, not to me. Say it to God. Would you repeat after me? Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And if you prayed that prayer today, we just applaud that decision. We applaud you. That's so great. We talked about the Connect card earlier. Would you just take it out? Give give me enough contact info that I can get back to you and check the box at the bottom that tells me about your decision today because I really want to applaud you and encourage you in that step of faith. God bless you. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Garen. I, I love, yeah, let's give him a hand. Let's give the Lord a hand. I love how you said that the Lord is, he's calling us to take these faith steps. And sometimes we even stumble sometimes. But every step we take is just leading us toward eternity, toward that eternal city. It's like we don't even have to hope anymore at that point, right? We don't even have to have faith. We We see everything. We see the Lord. We're standing with him. I look forward to that day, don't you? Amen. All right. Well, the ushers are going to be coming down the aisles to collect any Connect cards um, that you guys have filled out. Also, new friends connection connection um, after service right now. So if you're at all interested in that, you just want to learn more about the church, want to find out how to get connected, want to meet us, figure out what we're doing here, please go to Classroom 3. It's just off of the lobby. We love to talk to you, love to meet you. And then if we could have just a few people to um, set up for together nights, we're going to set up a couple tables in here. Um, Please talk with Jerry. Jerry, raise your hand. There he is. We're going to set those up. All right. We love you guys. We will see you next week. God bless.